Again, that's not three hits. It's one hit because you need to run up there, grab the balloon, and throw it back up uh, into the air. Um, if the balloon starts drifting out of the circle, you're standing there, just kind of knock it back into the circle. Um, you get your counting the number of hits, and then if the game finishes, the circle director will point to you and kind of like this, and you just go forward and hit four times or whatever. And then they'll let the scorekeepers know how many times it touched. All right, makes sense? Sparky in and out. This is kind of like TNT or Trek Journey uh, Bean Bag Bonanza. Um, except we have a bucket here with the kids. You're standing here again. They start with a bean bag, they run out, they put it in the bucket, they run back, tag the next player, they run out, take it out of the bucket, bring it back, and it continues to work back and forth till the last player comes in, puts it into the bucket, and then grabs their pin or bean bag. Um, what we're looking for? somebody leaving early, or throwing the bean bag into the bucket. Their hand should be, if this is the bucket, our hand goes, doesn't have to go to the bottom of the bucket when they put the bean bag in there, it just needs to be over the bucket, not from this far away launching it, because they're doing that, it looks like you think, oh, that's a great way of doing it, right? But they're taking one less step there, one less step back in doing that. And the difference between this many players they could, they could be five or six players ahead. Um, so we actually had one team do that one year where they had all the boys throw it. Um, and they're throwing it four or five feet. Well, they, they slaughtered the other team, but they were disqualified. Um, depending on the division that we have, whether or not the beanbag starts here or in the bucket, um, because we want to have it end with it in the bucket. Um, so it's just an odd or even number of players there. All right, we move along as it's happening, and then we watch the finish. All right, rabbit hunt. This one's a lot of fun, um, because they're just throwing this Nerf ball that they, you really can't do any damage to. So some of the coaches will ask, well, what if it hits the kid in the head? They're out. They're out. It's not going to hurt them. It's, we're not throwing bricks, we're not throwing bowling balls. It's this Nerf ball that doesn't even have the plastic coating on the outside. It's just like a sponge, all right? But what we're watching for is the actual legal throw. Don't be watch so much worried about the hit. Watch the throw and make sure that they're behind the circle with both feet when the ball releases from their hands. A lot of them get so excited, they step over the line and throw. And if as a judge, if all we're doing is looking for the impact, we didn't realize that it was not a legal throw. So we actually watch the balls all the time when it's here. Make sure it's a legal throw. And then as it comes out, and if it hits anybody, and it hits anybody, if it hits the floor, hits the person, if it hits you, and then it bounces and hits you, you're both out. And then if somebody's out in the circle and the ball's there, they go like that and they kick it, they're out. It's, the ball touches them in any way, shape, or form, and they're out. Um, and then, do we turn around and say to the kids, stay behind line, stay behind line when you throw? We don't need to say that because their coaches are typically right here for the kids that are on the line, so they're saying it to their kids. Um, what else about this one? Did I miss anything? All right. It's a lot of fun. The kids just run around like crazy on that one. That's our spot. Sparky Train, this is where we have the, the pool noodle, and we are on the inside, this one. We're not watching our zone. Remember all the other times we're looking this way at a running race? This one, we're actually here, and we run with them on the inside. And since we're on the inside of the circle, we're not having to run at the same speed as the kids, so even if we've got bad hips or whatever like that, um, it's pretty easy to do this one. You're just walking along the inside, and if they start getting ahead of you, we'll just move more towards the center. Um, and you're not having to move as far as they are on the outside. Um, we're just looking to make sure that everybody is holding on to the pool a little bit. If somebody comes to detach, then at that point we run out there, stop, stop, stop. Everybody's got to be holding the noodle. Once everybody's holding the noodle again, then they can take off running. And then when we get here, the anchor, the caboose, is the one that goes in for the pin and runs around there. So they don't all have to run into the middle. 
It's just the last person. So sometimes what we do is we say to them, when they're lined up before the game, who's going in for the pen? Just to remind them that we only need the last person to go in for the pen. All right, that makes sense. Balloon pop. They do not have to be evenly spaced along here, but the last player is typically standing on this line or in front of it. And then the balloon goes through, we've got an extra balloon in our hand. If they pop the first balloon, we take that second balloon, we insert it at the point where the, the bust happened and let them continue on. If that second balloon breaks before they finish the game, at that point they're disqualified. Um, so let's see, we want to make sure the balloon goes through everybody's legs and that they sit on and pop the balloon. Now, according to the rules, they have to do it in that triangle. Um, if they're close. I mean, I don't want them popping the balloon over here, but if they do, they do. I'm not going to call it on it because sometimes the balloon scoots out from underneath them. Some kids actually hold the balloon under their backside and then they sit on it. Some kids, for some reason, they just leave it on the floor and then they just leap and they miss the balloon and the, the air from when they're hitting the ground pushes the balloon off somewhere else and they run over there. The next thing you know, they're chasing balloons off over here. Um, so about the, about the only thing that try to not interfere with another team hitting the balloons. If you have two kids trying to do the flying leap. So yeah, um, and then the thing to watch out for is that sometimes it, it's supposed to be their backside and the floor popping the balloon, not their hand underneath here and them, you know, jamming their thumb through it. Um, these balloons are very well blown up. Um, compared to the uh, balloon relay that the TNT and the Trek Journey have. The Trek Journey, TNT, the balloon's much smaller so that they can squeeze it and all this kind of stuff. This, so that's, we're doing that so that the balloon won't break easily. Um, this one, we blow the balloon up big because we want it to break um, on them when they sit on it. Does that make sense? And then when we blow these balloons up, all the judges and the circle director will be together blowing the balloons up, making sure all the balloons are the same size. All right. And we're yeah, they, they will, the balloons will be the same color. So that, because we've had problems with the batches okay. not necessarily being... So like a yellow balloon might be weaker than a red balloon. Okay. And right. so, so that's, that we had one team that objected strongly that they were popping a color other than their own. Sorry, we're going to do it the same for all four, just because it's more fair. Okay. So then after that game, then we have the awards. So again, while the message is going on, we go and we grab the awards. Um, okay, we've got a few more minutes, so we're done. We go and grab the awards. We help with the offering and stuff like that that happens. Um, we hand the awards to everyone, the patches to the kids. Sometimes what we don't actually hand the, the individual patches to the kids, we actually hand it to the coach because if we hand it to a kindergartner, a lot of times the patch ends up being lost. So we hand the 10, 12 patches for whoever, you know, however many their team has and the coach. We hand that to the coach and let the coach hand those out to the kids. Whereas with TNT, when we're handing out the medals and stuff like that, we're handing them out to the individual players. They're a little older, they're a little bit more responsible. All right, we study our rule books. If you have questions, email myself and Dave and Warren and we can help that out. All right, that was the end of that one. Do we have one for Trek Journey? Think, for we already did the Trek. Uh, well, for the for the I don't know that Warren put one together. 